And I paused and then turned to her. And this silence sat between us until she broke it by saying, bought my son a pair of sunglasses. He never wears them. <laughs> and then she fucked off. Like she just <laughs> left that with me to stew over for the rest of the day. Just a conundrum I had to unpack for some reason. Australians, you always act like we're laissez-faire, but we love a rule. We love a rule. To make that no, but put that, put a sign on it, put a sign on it. That's an oh and s Don't do that, don't do that. Like, you know how you stop an Australian? You just put a traffic cone in front of them. Just... <laughs> it's orange, what are you gonna do? I can't go further. You don't have me high vis. I wish I could, I wish I could. And you realise when you grow up in that environment, you're indoctrinated into it. Because I was over in America and I was staying at a hotel and um, uh, there was this pool party happening. So there's a pool and there's a bar right next to it, DJ playing. Great, fun times. But I realised I could get out dripping wet and just order myself two sweet cocktails. I'm like, why wouldn't I take advantage of this sucker? So I act accordingly, get to the bar, order the drinks, and I'm so glad I have a room full of Australians who understand the situation I found myself in because I was a little taken aback when those drinks returned to me in, um, in cups made of glass. Uh, <laughs> Not plastic, okay, glass. And I'm outside and that's bad water safety. You know that, you know that. And as a fully formed adult, I looked another adult in the eyes and I said, can I take these into the pool? <laughs> and he didn't answer me straight away because he was looking for my carer. And <laughs> he finally said, yeah. And I swear to God, this is my response. I said, we're not allowed to do that back home. <laughs> <laughs> and then I glassed him because he has to learn. <laughs> but where I live is like so many gentrified suburbs around Australia, inner city suburbs. They used to be a bit rough, now they're turning over. But what I like about my suburb is that its past still strikes a long shadow. Because I can let you know when all you good people, most of you here this evening go to work, I can let you know that's with the interesting people come out to play. <laughs> and because I'm a stand-up comedian and I don't have a real job, I get to meet them. <laughs> and I remember I was crossing the road one morning, I was standing there waiting, and there was a woman in my peripheral, she would have been, I don't know, 60, 65 years old, she was like someone's lovely grandmother. And I could see her and she was coming closer and closer towards me. I just assumed she was crossing the road like I am. But then she stopped right next to me. I did not know this woman. And I paused and then turned to her and this silence sat between us until she broke it by saying, bought my son a pair of sunglasses. He never wears them. <laughs> and then she fucked off. Like she just <laughs> left that with me to stew over for the rest of the day. Just a conundrum I had to unpack for some reason. And I thought, you can't beat that. Surely you can't beat that. But only a few days later, I went to the supermarket. I was coming out. I had bags of groceries and I was <laughs> trying to leave. And this kid, he was right in front of me. When I say kid, 21, 22 years old. He stops, he looks at me and he goes, G'day, I'm Terry. I thought to myself, well, I've never met a Terry under 50. <laughs> you are the rarest of all Pokemon. So this is gonna be fun. <laughs> and I said, how are you, Terry? And he said, what are your thoughts on assisted suicide? Strong opener, Tez. Uh, <laughs> my head is exploding. I'm like, what's the right answer here? I don't know how to defend myself. I've got shopping on my person. I don't know what to do. Then finally I just went with the truth. I said, uh, I gotta be honest, Terry. I haven't done a lot of research on it. And then we looked at each other. I didn't know where he was gonna go with it. And he went, ha ha, me neither. <laughs> and then he fucked off. Just left me standing there thinking, why don't you wear the sunglasses your mum bought you? I don't <laughs> know what's going on. And when I found out about this law, this blew my tiny mind apart 
Did you know that if a man is sitting on a commercial flight in Australia, any commercial flight in this country, and if he's sitting on his own, but he is sitting next to an unaccompanied minor, a child from 12 or under, that man has to get moved on the off chance that he's a pedophile. <laughs> That's the law. I now never, ever have to sit next to a screaming child on a flight ever again. <laughs> All I have to do is go, boom. Excuse me, stewardess, looks like this sexy child is missing its mother. <laughs> Guys, I've been Dave Thornton. Thanks. I live in Brunswick in Melbourne, okay, that's where I live. Uh, it's a very alternative suburb. I dearly love it. It's great. But this is the thing, it's a very alternative suburb, so all the kids, right, they're alternative because their parents are, and you can clock them. It's great. They've all got vegan leather shoes, and, you know, you have those stinted conversations where you're like, oh, do you like the wiggles? And they're like, I'm not allowed screen time. When I do, I have to watch Four Corners. Like, oh. <laughs> well, this is fun. Strap in for foreign correspondent. This is good. Um, and I was at the park with my, uh, my two-year-old, and she just befriended this boy, you know, he was about the same age, he had a little ball, they were kicking it around. And rule of thumb is, two-year-olds have zero coordination, zero. But this little boy, right, big hands, big feet, and, uh, and he was just kicking the ball around, catching it, he was unbelievable, right? And I just said offhand, I'm going, oh, have a look at this little unit. He's going to grow up to be a gun footballer. And his mum, who I just met at the park, stopped dead in her tracks and said, well, I hope not, because I hate football and I hate its culture. I was like, oh my God, how alternative is this suburb where that kid will have to come out as a footballer to his parents? <laughs> He'll come home one night at 16, you know, have dirt on his shirt, and she'll be like, Jamathan, how'd you get that? <laughs> and finally the floodgates will burst. He's like, I've been living a lie. <laughs> I wasn't at woodwind class after school, okay? I've been playing footy, I love it. It's just me, love me for who I am. Look, and I know you raised me as gay, but I think I'm straight. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I think I want to get vaccinated. You know, it's a <laughs> hard conversation to have. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Gosh darn it, did we have some fun, eh? And if you want more fun, why don't you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel? And you can also find me on the socials. I mean, don't DM me. My wife doesn't want that happening. I'm just saying you can follow for all the content and stuff like that. Yeah, saved it.